Okay, in this video, we are going to um, see about how we can simplify simulating our designs using Quartus. Um, we obviously use Questa or Model Sim, depending on the version of Quartus that you're using. I'm using one of the latest versions, so I'm using Questa, not Model Sim. Um, but um, simulating by hand can be a pain. So let's take a look at what we got. I've already got Quartus opened up here and I've written a very simple level to pulse detector state machine. We've got three states, idle, level detected, and level hold. We've got our state, we've got our state machine block. Um, on reset, we're going to idle. If we're in idle and we detect a level, we're gonna to go to our level detected. Otherwise, we stay in idle. If we're in detect level detected, if we get level, we're gonna to go to level hold and we'll stay there until it goes back to zero. Otherwise we go back to idle. And then level hold is just a state for us to sit there and spin until that level goes away. And we only produce a one when our level's detected. So the normal way students learn how to simulate is we just click on our simulation here and fire it up. All right. Let's let this get compiled up here. I can expand my work folder and I can double click on my project. That will take us into simulation mode. And come on, switch over, there we go. Now I should be able to add my signals to my waveform. And the way we normally do this is we have to individually assign our signals, right? I'm gonna overwrite that with a clock. We want our reset to be driven to a one initially so we know where we're at. And let's start with our level being a zero. And then I can give it a clock pulse, right? So we'll clock it for one pulse. Then we can drop our reset. And we'll give it another clock pulse and maybe now we get a level, right? So let's force that level to be a one. And we can simulate, right? We get our pulse out. It doesn't matter how long that stays there. We drop our level back to zero. And there we go. So that simulates our state machine. And while it works, it's kind of a big pain. So let's look at a couple more ways we can not have to do it this way. Um, first things first, um, in order to automate your simulation, you have to write another piece of Verilog code or VHDL, whichever you prefer. Um, since we wrote Verilog, I'm going to write my test bench in Verilog. And we basically create what's called a test bench. A test bench is just a piece of Verilog code that's going to drive our inputs and look at the outputs. So it's a piece of verification test code. Um, now, it's going to look a little bit different than what we're used to. One of the first things we see up here is I've got this TAC time scale, one nanosecond over one picosecond. So my, um, my scale is one nanosecond with a precision of one picosecond. And then I, I declare my module as just test bench with no inputs or outputs. And the thing to remember here is anything that was a wire, so clock, reset, and level, in your test bench, those become registers. And then anything that was a register becomes a wire. So I declare those, I've got my clock, my reset, my level, and my pulse. Okay, that's pretty simple. Next thing I have to do is instantiate the module that I'm testing. And we do that just like we do any other instantiation, right? I give it the module name um, a unique identifier, and then I map my pins, my clock, my reset, my level, and my pulse. And then it's just driving the, the simulation, right? 
So I have an always block. Basically, what this says is every 10 time units, clock is going to get the inverse of clock. So that's just going to take care of our clock signal. And then this initial block is what's going to run our system, right? So initially, clock is a zero, resets a one, and levels a zero. Then after 30 time units, I'm going to set reset to a zero. These are cumulative, right? So this is 30 time units from the beginning of the simulation. So 20 time units after that would be 50 time units into the simulation. We're going to set our level to a 1. 50 time units after that, we're going to set it back to a 0. So that's 100 time units in now. 25 time units after that, we're going to set it back to a 1. 10 time units after that, we're going to set it back to a 0. And that's my basic test bench. Now, there's a couple different ways we can run this test bench. Um, one thing you'll notice is I've saved this um, in the um, in my project, the simulation, the model sim directory. That's where all of these things need to live. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so I'm going to show you the method that I prefer first. And that is writing a tickle or a TCL script. Um, the TCL script is fairly similar. It uses this same um, format. The only thing that changes in this script from project to project is how long I'm going to run the simulation for. And we can kind of figure that out, right? 30 plus 20 is 50, plus 50 is 100, plus 25 plus 10. We're at 100 and... Um, Let's see, we have 125, 135, and I'm going to go another 25 or 15 after that. So there we go. All right, so I'm going to run this for around 160 nanoseconds. That should give me enough time. Um, the other thing to note is we're calling a wave.do. This is a format for the waveforms that we're going to use. And obviously, if you're bringing in any other libraries or um, um, simulator resources, those would need to be put in there as well. Um, the wave.do, on the other hand, is just a way to format your wave window. So I'm bringing in my inputs. I've got my clock, my reset, and my level. Um, then I've got my states, so I can display my state, and then my output pulse. And then again, this part's pretty much not changing except for how long we're resetting to. So with that, all I got to do to run this is run that tickle script. So if I come down here and I say do testbench.tickle, it will reset our simulation. It will recompile our code. It will simulate our project and show us the results. So here we go. There's my clock, my reset, my level. There's my states. And here's my pulse, right? So we initially came in, we had a reset. We lowered the reset. Here we got a pulse. That pulse was high for there. There's my output pulse. It lowered. We got a pulse here, a very short one, but it was detected by that clock edge. So we got one pulse worth of output out of that. So that is one way to run our um, test bench. Um, it's my preferred method because I got a little bit more control over how things are displayed with my wave.do. I can juice things up a little bit. Um, but you do have to write the tickle script. You do have to write the wave.do as well as the test bench. The other method I'm going to show you just requires the test bench to be written. So, <coughs> excuse me. The way we do that one is we would go over to our assignments and our um, settings. Let me drag this over to the right window. And then under the EDA tools section, we need to go to simulation and down here in the bottom there's a section called native link settings so basically we want to click on that compile a test bench 
And then we're going to click on the test benches button. And that will bring up the test benches box. And I'm going to say I've got a new test bench. Um, test bench name is just test bench. Um, the top level module is called test bench. I want to use, I want to end the simulation at 160 nanoseconds, just like before. And now I need to go add in my simulation model sim, my test bench.v. So let's add that in. There we go. I'm going to hit OK. There's my test bench. I'm going to hit OK. I can compile that test bench now <coughs> called test bench. If I had, I could write some scripts and some other things, but that's basically all I need to do. So now when I run my simulator, it will automatically compile my design and my test bench, run my test bench, and then show me a default waveform with my test bench results. And it's all zoomed out, so I gotta zoom in quite a ways. Let me shift that over a little bit more. There we go. But that's the same basic waveform I had with my other version, right? Same test bench should produce the same results. So, but notice I don't get my states. I don't get some of the other niceties that I get by writing the tickle script and things like that. Um, so that is the basics of how we can use a test bench to um, test our designs in Cordis. And remember, you can also do some other pretty cool things since this is a state machine. If we kind of look at the RTL, I can double click on that state machine and it will show me the state diagram and the transition table for it. Um, what kind of encoding if I specified that. Um, as well as some other cool stuff. And like always, if you're enjoying these videos and would like to see some more, um, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. And I appreciate your uh, watching the videos. Thank you.